also receiving the pink hat for the Fall Out of the Cross Association. It's Jim Rogowski. He's been in so many places, and I'm going to let you tell him some of you his background, but he's been in many, many stops. And fortunately, he stopped here today. He's going to develop your trend. Coach Rogowski. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Just want to thank uh, the Philadelphia Lacrosse Association and the Eastern PA Lacrosse, uh, Lacrosse Coach Association just for having me out here today. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the, the developing the defender. I think it's perfect after the last presentation to go into um, how to defend all that stuff that he just talked about. Just a little bit about my background. Uh, I played Division III lacrosse at St. Mary's College in Southern Maryland. I bumped around a little bit. Uh, in 2000 and 2001, I was at Washington and Lee. Following that, I was at Drexel for three years as the defensive coordinator under Chris Bates. Uh, after that, I was at Rutgers for six years as the D coordinator, and then Scranton as the head coach for two years, and now Lafayette as the head coach. So I've sort of been everywhere, been there, done that, um, have a lot of different uh, views and, and opinions on things just because I've kind of sort of lived it all in, in different capacities. Um, I think when you, uh, one of the funny things just about you know, the difference between uh, defense and offense is you can take a look at the two, uh, the two outlines, Coach Keating's outline and my outline, and clearly there's a big difference between uh, offensive guys and D guys. We're, we tend to be a little more, uh, from a defensive standpoint, a little more um, structured, a little more detail-oriented. Uh, offensive guys are a little more free-flowing and, and kind of creative. So just want to talk to you a little bit about what we do at Lafayette and how we start and how we build up. And, and in the very beginning, we, we start very basic uh, just our basic philosophy on how we're going to slide, how we're going to play team defense, but also how we're going to teach the individual defender. Our basic philosophy is keep the ball down the side. We want the guys to, to the offensive team to shoot down the side where they have the least uh, percentage, least amount of angle. Uh, we pressure the ball side adjacent, stick on the gloves, and the, and the whole point of that is, is if we do slide and the ball goes forward, we want that offensive player to carry two to three steps, which gives us time to recover. Basically, when you slide your man down, it takes two to three seconds to recover to get back to six on six, even strength. We, uh, one of our philosophies is to protect the crease. We never want to get up a, a crease goal, uh, and obviously, which leads into giving up the outside shot. And then we also talk to our guys about the 35-7 rule. Most likely, during a game, you're going to give up 35 shots and probably seven goals. And if you can keep the opposing team to that number, you have a better chance of, of winning a game. And you know, this kind of talks about the mentality which you have to talk to your, your defensive guys, and it's almost like Bill Belichick with the Patriots. He talks about bend, don't break. And that's basically what the 35-7 rule is. If you get beat once, you can't worry about it. You just can't get beat a second time. Or if you give up a goal, you know, it's OK as long as you don't give up that same, same goal again. So we, always, we talk about that with our, with our D guys. Stepping into the team defensive philosophy, how are we going to slide and how are we going to recover? At Lafayette, we're pretty basic. We, we, we slide from the crease uh, at, with every dodge. Where we get a little more complex and intricate is how we fill uh, the slide and then how we recover. Uh, but our basic premise is to be as simple as possible. A couple keys, you know, and this is just the stuff that we talk with, with the guys on a daily basis. Uh, and Coach Keating said it, you know, it, it's mindset. We talk about toughness, mental and physical. We talk about what that means, what it means for us, what it means for, for the defenders in the program. We talk about the team concept. Too many times uh, when we're dealing with some of, of our defenders, they get frustrated when they get slid to because they think they're playing defense. They're all amped up, up playing good on-ball defense. But you have to, to train them to understand that there's a team concept here. Sometimes you need to get slid to, and that's OK. Communication, recognition, um, you know, communicating what we're doing, sliding-wise, filling, recognizing when we're sliding, how we're recovering, all those things. You know, that's, that's kind of what we do in preparation. Uh, but that's you know, really kind of the next level into the, to the team uh, concepts of, of, of defense. We use film all the time. I think film is huge. Uh, I think it is possible at the high school level, but I'm sure you know, one of the problems you guys have is you don't, you don't have time to watch the film. I, even at the visual level, it's still hard to find the time to, to watch the film because the guys have class, we have practice. Uh, there's some great resources out there where you can put post film up. I'm sure a lot of you guys do this. You can post film up on a website. The guys can log in and they can watch it. The point of that is, to help them understand what you're talking about. A lot of times they hear you, what you're saying, but they don't understand. Sometimes they need to see it. So it's extremely important to 
try to integrate film as best you can. Scouting reports, I'm sure you guys all do that. Those are huge just in setting up your defensive plan and you know, basically how an individual defender is going to play somebody. Play decisive. This is one of the, the, the things that we really talk about as a, as a coaching staff is are we doing too much so that they're thinking too much so that we're playing slower? And there is, you know, with all these slide packages and reinventing the wheel and zones, all this kind of stuff, sometimes your guys are thinking before they do something and they're not playing decisive and you're not going to be as good of a defense as you could be. Practice and repetition. If you're going to play decisive, whatever you decide to do, you have to continually practice and repeat it. And I believe in keeping it simple. And you can be simple, um, but you can, you can seem to be a little more intricate, and we'll talk about it later, just by doing these little things. Question. Yep. Uh, communication. Do you have difficulty getting the defense to communicate? And if not, what do you do to get them to communicate? We do. And I think that's, that's the nature of the beast is everybody slides. Everybody, and, you know, everybody can, you can figure that out. That's not that big of a deal. It's what happens next is the problem. Where the ball goes forward, the ball goes backward. How are you going to recover? Are you going to rotate? We tell our guys, and this is how we talk about communication, we talk about it as direct communication. We talk about it as having a conversation. Meaning, if you have a guy who's a sly guy, you have a guy who's a fill guy, what we want the communication to be is, hey, Johnny, you know, I'm your fill. You can go slide. You know, hey, Tommy, I'm here to slide. You know, do you have my fill? So we talk about having a conversation and also talking about you know, who has the fill, who has the rotation, talking about it before it happens. And that's, that's the tough part. You know, that, that's something that as a defensive possession goes further, as you get tired, you know, that's the stuff that slips, but that's, you know, the reality is if you want to play good defense, you know, that's one of the, the most important things is how do you, you know, do that communication. When they get to you, they get out of high school, they, do they communicate? No, every freshman is, is so scared to, to say something that, you know, because they, they, they don't want to be wrong. And, and that's the whole point is, this is, you know, it takes time to talk about it, is just say something. You know, just, 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 I don't care if it's wrong, just say something. So when we do it, when we start with communication, we're pretty basic. We have a fill, which we call an anchor. We have a slide guy, which we, we just say, you're the one, or you know, you're the slide guy. We don't really say, like some people say hot, we don't really say that. And you know, then we just talk about specific rules that if there's a quick pass, we might rotate. So really what they're doing is saying five things at once. One of the things that we have gotten to the point, of, and this is just something we do, is we really tell our goalies not to say much. Because a lot of times there's goalies that are screaming balls back right, balls left right. And, and they do do that. They just don't have constant chatter because that does sometimes get in the way of the defense. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm sure you know, some people would, wouldn't agree with that. Um, but that's just something that we, you know, we spend a lot of time on seeing the ball off ball defense. So the guys don't necessarily need to know where the ball is. And so that kind of helps it kind of keep that chatter down a little bit. Three phases of defense, pretty basic on ball, off ball, and your slide recovery, which is team defense. Uh, on ball defense, like we said before, it's a mindset. You know, basically, you're telling the guys to stay between the man and the goal. You have to be physical. There is a difference between how you teach short pole defense and long pole defense. Um, just you know, because of the nature of the position, and we have been playing with some some things of being less physical with our short poles, more or less matching feet, um, and that's something we're still kind of playing out. But with the long poles, you know, having them either stick out, having guys dodge for the race of the cage, so we teach that um, that whole scenario. Power stance, just like Coach Keating said, you know, you got to stay low. It's the same thing on defense. You got to have your, your hips low so you can push. Hold on, hands. We talk about the V hold. We talk about the backhand hold. We talk about throwing checks. Feet, approach angles. The, the, the V hold, so let's just, I, I play, I'm a right hander, so with a um, with the back, with the V hold, essentially it's on the left handed dodger where if this is my stick, or if we have our stick in this position. The stick and the arm makes it big. So at goal line extended, we're sitting down in a V hole. Um, for a righty on a left, that would be for a right hand dodger. For a righty on a left hand dodger, we're talking backhand hold. Traditionally, the backhand hold was like this, where it's your, actually your back arm. We do more of a kind of like a pseudo cross check, but it's more of a, a, a fist uh, kind of punch. And, punch and I can show you after exactly what we can do. Um, and we spend a lot of time on, on, on those things. Approach angles, we talk about cutting the guy in half, and essentially what we're saying is your inside foot, which is close to the goal, should be right down the middle of the guy you're going to approach. That way you're forcing to uh, through X, or you're forcing him down the side, just depending on your upfield field of the goal. Forcing down the side, no middle, we only dodge in the middle, no rollbacks. We are weak in the middle just because if somebody dodges to the middle, 
both guys have to fill, and you, you're susceptible to sticks to the backside bite. So, you know, we talk about one of the things that we say, if somebody gets in the middle, we're automatic deciding. If somebody gets the roll back, we're automatic deciding. So there's a little rules that we do. Uh, shadow cushion, we're always going to have sticks on gloves, and then when we're playing defense um, at X, we talk about beating spot, coach shot, heating tucked at five and five, we call it seven and seven. It's just a spot on the field where the offensive player can dodge from X has the best opportunity to move the goalie to get um, to get the best angle. So we try to beat him to that spot and not let him get there. Uh, behind GOE, at GOE, above GOE, these are really what we start talking about in specific and we'll show you some film and that specific uh, things we're looking for. Seven and seven, seven yards up, seven yards out. Uh, coach called it five and five. It, it's really you know, it's just, like I said, the best angle, you can move the goalie, there's many different shooting opportunities. If you watch all the drills that Coach Keen did, they, they literally get to this spot every time. So one of the things that we do from a defensive standpoint is show the guys and teach the guys and have them watch the offensive shooting drills exactly what they're trying to do. Know the dodge line and how they get there. So if you notice and you watch his drills, literally the guy does this. He gets there. All, every shooting drill they do, that's what they do. And then they do something that acts to 7-7. Seven and, seven. and so when you think about it, this is the dodge line. And we talk about our guys defensively is understand what attacking they're trying to do. Understand that dodge line. And our goal is to keep them off that dodge line. And if you can push them at any point during this dodge line away, they can't get to the X. And that's where they want to get to. We talk about a little philosophy is we, we force them to play offense on you. Don't play defense on them. What that means is... It's kind of how we first approach the ball. We never approach a guy square. We always cut the guy in half, and we always set up our drop step. And you'll see Phil on this in a minute, because we want to dictate where that's got, that guy's going. If we play square on our initial approach, our first step is a drop step, and that offensive guy has an advantage on a split dodge. So what we're trying to do is just our initial approach is force him to play offense on you, meaning if I cut him in half and I set up my drop step and I want him to go left, he has to go left. Because I want I want him to play. I don't want him, I don't want to be chasing him around. I don't want to be reactive. I want to push him in the direction I want to go. Talk about keeping your stick out. One of the, the worst, the biggest habits that we try to break is just your holding your stick in the air, trying to knock down passes. Stick so costs like 200 bucks. Many guys don't use it. We just want to get that stick out, get it in their numbers when they dodge. That forces them to split dodge two to three steps further away from the cage. Which allows them to, allows us to be more reactive, but you know basically um, keeps them in a situation where they're further away from where they want to be. Talk about setting up your drop step. We talk about upper body, and lower body. And what we mean by the upper body, and lower body is if we're telling the guy to set up your drop step, cut the guy in half, your toes are going to be pointing a different direction. So your upper body is going to be square at the man with your stick out, and your lower body is not going to be square. It's going to be pointing to a direction, either left or right, whichever way you, you want him to go. So you have to teach your guys with footwork and muscle memory. You know, it's kind of like the old school GI Joe guys, where your upper body and lower body are doing something different, and that's effective defense. Too many times when someone approaches the ball and, they, and that defender splits or that offensive guy splits, they go like this and they open the gate. And if you do that right here, you're basically giving up seven and seven. So those are all the individual footwork things that we work on on a daily basis and then we talk about. Below GLE, we want to keep a stick up field. This is one of the habits that um, we find, especially just depending upon what direction the guy dodges. If it's a somewhat, if you're a right-handed defender and the guy's dodging left-handed, you can certainly just sit in the B-hole. You know, this is what feels comfortable. It's easy to push here. But it's when those, those guys dodge lefty, or excuse me, righty, it's the V-hole here, which is tough to push. You'll see a lot of defenders will go like this. And if they do that above, uh, above GLE or a little bit below GLE, they're basically getting a free lane to 7-7. Seven seven. So we talk about making sure we keep our stick up field. We want to do below GLE. We want to force back to X. We just want to keep that guy as a feeder. We're throwing poke checks. Um, you know, that's kind of really what, what just basically we think is the best check. We want to get the attack on the run side to side and make the feeder, not a shooter. The more times we keep behind the cage, the easier it is for us defensively because we don't have to worry about as much. We want to beat him to the spot, meaning if he's going through Rex and he's committed to go left-handed, we're going to beat him to that spot and goal line extended so he doesn't get the 7-7 seven seven to push him up the dodge line. And then we also teach jumping over the goal. I saw this years ago from Coach Petramala uh, at Hopkins. One of the four drills that we will do is we'll literally have the guy 
not playing anybody, you just work on going through X, jumping over the cage, coming back to goal line extended, and going back and forth. Because that's going to happen in, in games sometimes. You have to practice that type of footwork. So here's just some film. Uh, this is back from days of Huckers, Coach Brett. Um, here's a little bit of a force to force, side to side below the GLE. And the whole point here is just playing a style of getting to the spot, keep them behind the cage so that he can be a, a feeder, not a dodger. Pretty basic. Okay, here's a. Now, you see in the very beginning here what he did. <coughs> right here, you can see how his drop step is, or his, his, he's not square, he's set up his drop step. So basically, what he's saying to this guy is, I want you to go right handed, I know you're going to go right handed. My upper body is square if I stick out, but my lower body is set up so my first step is with you, not a drop step. So there is no advantage by this guy taking off. And essentially, what we're trying to do is, we're trying to take the change of direction out of the offensive player's uh, repertoire because that's what's hard to cover is that change of direction, right? Become reactive as opposed to being proactive and telling them which way to go. Here's a guy, here's a, an example of going back, jumping over the cage, keeping the guy correct, being into a spot, playing good defense, being forceful up the goal line extent. At GLE, this is where we really start to clamp down on the V hold or the backhand hold. And the V-hold um, looks like this, where we're going to try and clamp him right here and force him out. And your backhand hold, which is here, where you're pushing him this way, if I was a right-handed defender. We start talking about being physical, sitting down. Um, it's really hard to push a guy if you're standing up. It's much easier when you're, you're sitting. And we talk to our guys a lot about why we lift weights. We do all these squats. We do all these hand cleans. And when you take a look at the stance, we talk about what the power stance is. That's essentially your squat stance before you explode up. It's the best of your hand clean stance before you explode up. So we tell our guys at goal line extended, this is why we do those, those that weight room stuff. This is why we spend all the time in the weight room. You want to be physical, you want to sit. So when you're at GLE and you're ready to push them off the dodge line, you can explode using all your squat reps, using all your hand clean reps, whatever else you're doing to get in there. Feed into the spot and drive, exactly what we're talking about. We have a rule, no checks here. And this is where we really focus on the footwork. Physical at GLE. He sits, he's driving. Okay, he's staying physical at GLE, trying to force the inside roll. Okay, stick up field, this is the, really the important thing. And right here, a lot of defenders will have a tendency to put this hand on him right here. And if that happens, automatically, he has to dodge up field. We, you have to practice this, and you practice this a lot, keeping that stick up field and keeping that V-hole. And if you're, you're not, these guys are not as strong in the V-hole, and they have to be taught that it's more about body here, and not pushing, but they have to keep their stick up field. In this scenario, if their stick's behind him, we do slide from the crease, this guy's gonna see it, see it coming, and it's not gonna be effective to slide. He does a pretty good job of it depends, on, it depends on what your philosophy is with checking. Basically, what, what I, my philosophy is, we want to force everybody through X. You can throw checks until you get to X. Once you get past X, you're trying to beat them to the spot, you really need to stop throwing checks, get your stick up field, and sit and go and extend it. But if you think about it, the goal is on the pipe, you see how this goal is on the pipe here. And you have one to two yards of free range to force an inside roll. So it's kind of like a, a plus and minus range. But the whole point is, you know, and I'm sure Coach King will tell you this, the reason why they say get low is because if that read is a sticks behind, I'm getting low and I'm getting a field on your body. So, you know, that's why they do those things that they do. Uh, and that's why we say keep our, you know, keep that stick up field. You see there he goes for a check. You got lucky on that one. Above GLE, stay physical, drive to a corner. Uh, we want to talk about driving to the, the box corner or the end line corner. Stick up field, no windshield wipers. One of the, the, the habits we, we see is that as soon as the guy gets and he sits down and that attackman takes one step back to X, he immediately brings his stick back over and then the attackman just comes back up field. That's something they practice at 7 and 7. So we want to, again, just kind of be a little bit more patient, sit down, wait, have him take two steps to X, making sure you know that he's going that way. 
Uh, a lot of times, once we get them, you know, kind of at seven and seven, we'll say make them a wing dodger. So once we drop them off that dodge line, you know, there's no need to go out and play them and force them to the cage. We want to make sure we, we re-square our feet up um, and make him a wing dodger. Again, reset the, the feet if necessary. And then the other thing we talk about is, you know, attacking and get up field. Are they going to the goal? Are they just feeding? We don't want to overplay a feeder and force them to go to the cage. So that's something that you kind of have to talk about, and we'll show you uh, some a little bit more film on that. Drive away, this is just an example of, of the guy getting upfield and what you do once he's upfield, he's there. Now here, we're just trying to drive him to the corner of the box here or the corner of the end line, not you know, forcing the inside roll or getting him away. So if he does take a shot, our goalie can you know, get, a good, get a good vision of it, get a good view of it. Driving seven and seven, just another example. He gets a seven and seven. The guy does a good job of keeping his stick up field a little too quickly on the windshield wiper, but now he's forcing him and he's driving him up field. So he does a pretty good job. The reality is you're not going to be able to keep everybody behind the cage, so you have to practice you know, the reads at goal line extended and then also the reads at seven and seven. Drills. Okay, so some of the drills that we do here with this is basic footwork. Um, you know, we'll work on ladders. We'll do all this kind of footwork, jump and rope, get the feet going, but it's having your upper body doing something that's different than your than your lower body. Approach angles. We will put cones out. We'll have a guy start at one cone and we'll approach it and we'll just work on breaking down, setting up our drop step, getting our stick out, just going back and forth, back and forth. Shadow drills. We spent a lot of time with the shadow drills and what that is, is we just have, and we do these with just D guys. So we have one guy on defense and the other defender is on offense without a stick. We just have him run through X and all the guy is doing when he run through X is just kind of doing a little bit of a little bit of V carry, and what we're training the guys to do is how to keep pressure on the hands while you're going forward, but then also while you're keeping that cushion as the guy comes at you. And that's the most important thing when you talk about cushion is you have to give ground when that guy's dodging at you, especially from X. If you don't, you're gonna force contact behind the cage, and then you're susceptible to getting beat up field. Alleys, we will work, um, this is one of the drills that we really focus on how to sit at goal line extended. We go to the alley of the field, we have everybody facing a certain way, and what they do is in the alley, uh, just where the, the lines are, just on a field, um, like right here, they'll start right here, and they'll go this way, kind of in a zigzag, facing forward, facing this way, and the first thing we do is we say shuffle step. So they just start shuffle step, they get to right here, they sit, they drop step, they go to the next line. So we're just working on at that, that point to sit, which would be goal line extended, how to sit down, how to set up your drop step. The next thing we'll do is we'll run. So we'll start there and they'll be in a full sprint. Um, and they'll go here and they'll sit and drop step because when they're full sprinting and they're standing up, they have to train their bodies to sit. We'll do two shuffle steps to a run, sit, and just kind of go back and forth. And the last thing we'll do is karaoke. And the whole point with that is to make sure the lower body is doing something different than the upper body. The key point when you do these these alleys is that every defender, when he starts this way and he's going to drop step, every defender will go like this and open the gate. And so what we're trying to do is train them to sit and step and keep that stick out so they can be ready to push, which would be very similar to what you would be doing at goal line extended. So we're working on those techniques, not necessarily around the cage. And then the next drills, Yorktown extended Yorktown creative one ones the next drills bring that next part into more of a set kind of around the cage. This is what it would be like in game situations. This card, Yorktown drill, uh, stole from a buddy of mine who went to Yorktown High School. So basically what we do here is you can, we start with just two D guys. This D guy has a stick, this, this D guy is on offense. We blow the whistle, we'll have the same thing set up on the other side. We blow the whistle and we tell this guy right here, your job is to get the seven and seven. So literally when we blow the whistle, your toes are pointing this way, we're simulating a dodge through X, we're trying to beat him to the spot. We want to sit at goal line extended. And then on the whistle, we just run the drill. And we do this over and over and over again. So we're teaching the sitting. We're teaching the, the, the stick up field. We're teaching how to push while you're moving. We're teaching all the things that are going to happen during a game. Extended Yorktown drill, we just move it out a little further. Here we have an approach. We cut them in half. We force them through X. And then we run the Yorktown drill. And what we're doing is building up into full speed. And then we get to the creative one-on-ones. That would be this defender and attackman, where we would start the extended Yorktown drill with an attackman and defender, 
just one-on-ones, and what we're doing is kind of building up into how to play our individual defense uh, positioning from behind the cage. Any questions on uh, the, the uh, on-ball stuff? Um, on the one-on-one, -on -one, the defender, when they get to the line extender, is their feet facing towards the corner? Years ago, when I first started out, we were really we really forced inside rolls, and what we used to say was your your toes should be forced in the end line. The problem with that is it's not realistic. It doesn't happen when you force that inside roll, and that guy goes inside. And you extend your hands. Every everybody gets called. Every ref calls you for a cross check. So what we've kind of said is now what we're trying to do is get your toes to the corner. So when we say drive to the corner. You're still you know if, if this is if that's the X corner and this is the goal. I'm still closing the gate and forcing the inside roll, but I'm able to drive a guy out upfield. So it allows me to do a little bit more. It allows me to sit on that change of direction. The problem is, if you sit like this and your toes are pointed to an end line, you're out of position, and it's really hard to cover somebody if he gets low and gets upfield. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get beat. So we've kind of ch I've kind of changed the way we've taught that. So in that scenario, we tell our guys who want toes pointed to a corner. Off-ball defense, um, somebody said it earlier about the offense. You're off-ball five, six of the time. So honestly, the most important thing in team defense is off-ball defense. We talk about a ball, you, man, triangle. It should be a, there should be a triangle that you can visibly see or draw with your man and where the ball is. You want to stay open, see everything. And what that means is you should be at the top point of that triangle, and you should be able to see everything that's in front of you. We talk about, we work on peripheral vision. Uh, just kind of seeing out of your peripheries. We kind of have some little drills that we practice with that. Nothing crazy, just kind of, you know, sitting um, during, uh, during stretching and maybe sitting next to somebody and just sit here and just put numbers up and having him look straight and seeing the numbers. Uh, I played ice hockey growing up, and one of the things that we used to do for peripheral vision is we used to uh, the puck handle like this, facing forward, being able to see the puck. So we do the same thing with our stick, with the ball. We just kind of take it like this. And it's, it's really doing nothing but just having you be able to see what's going on in the side of your eyes. Because in that ball you triangle, it's great if everybody's stationary, but my man's going to move. So if I'm looking at the ball, I'm looking straight, and I don't see this guy here, I know I have to change my, tri my triangle. So we practice that. Pistols, this is something I got from youth, and I just think it's fantastic. And we will say this, and we'll stop practice, and we'll say, let me see your pistols. And what the pistols is is a, a way to, if this is my man, if this is the ball right here, and my man's over there, is literally like a cowboy. Take your guns out and shoot your pistols. And you should be able to look forward, see both guys, and if you can do that, that means your, your ball, you man, triangle is, is set up the right way. If you're too, too deep, that means that you can see too much, and if you're too high in the triangle, that means you can't see anything with your pistols. Toes to the sideline, when we're off ball, we really talk about having your toes to the sideline. If your toes are to the sideline, you can see everything. We talk about staying open, seeing everything. And then we have constant emphasis on this. And every drill that we do, and this is where being a defensive coach gets kind of like boring. We say the same thing day in, day out in every drill. Pistols, toes to the sideline, stay open, where's your triangle, all those things. It has to be a part of every drill you do. Sure, yeah, well, let, let's, um, let me show you how it works in the line. So basically, now you talk about, okay, what does off-ball mean? How do you teach off-ball? And essentially, we have two lines here. We have this line here and this line here. And what we're talking about is a strong side, weak side line, and then we have a diagonal defense rule. So what we're saying here is, if the ball is right here, ball's right here, this line here, this is the strong side, and this is the weak side. And so we tell our D guys is if you're on the weak side and you're off ball, your toes should be facing this sideline so you can see the strong side. When the ball is behind the cage and we call this the upfield downfield line, okay, we start talking about the same thing is that if the ball is down here, okay, we start talking about diagonal defense and this is kind of where it gets into the fills. If the ball is right here and you're diagonal, you want to be on this point which means that you're filling because we slide from the crease. So when you look at the off-ball lines, it tells you what you're doing strong side, weak side, what you're doing upfield, downfield, and if you're the diagonal guy, you should be on this point because you're the fill man. So we can actually put these lines out, we cone them out, we paint them on the field, and this is how we start our basic off-ball defense. And this is where we start showing them that you need to see your toes have to be pointed to the sideline so you can see everything going on the strong side. 
understand that you also have to pay attention to your ball man triangle because if you don't, then your guy's going to be behind you. You can't see what he's doing. On top of, don't forget, we're going to slide. If you're diagonal, you have to fill the crease. So you talk about something that seems pretty simple. Now you start getting intricate. But these are guidelines that you can put on the field that help um, just with determining where you're going to be off ball. The drills for these, it's really pretty simple. We put cones out in offensive sets with those lines, and we just say the ball's over here, back right, back left, and we just get the guys used to going off, on ball, off ball, their approaches, uh, paying attention to you know, why you're moving, um, what are you doing next, and, and that's the thing is, you, know, you go from on ball to off ball, now all of a sudden, you know, some people what they'll do is they'll take their time sprinting in off ball, well, you know what? A lot of times in two passes, you're going to be diagonal. So we start getting these guys thinking of as you're approaching, as you're coming back in, start to think about what your, your backside off ball fill responsibilities are. <laughs> so we'll do those approach drills. Sometimes one on ones, we always do off ball to on ball, two on twos, all those things. Kind of really start with those approach. But when we do those approach drills, we'll do them in a way where they're approaching on the field. And as they're coming back in, they're communicating with what their fill is or their diagonal. So we're teaching them how to do those things. And a lot of times we do with this is we do D versus D. So we say we have 12 defensemen, we include D midi in this. We put four guys, we put six guys in white, we put six guys in black, we put them in an offensive set, we bring out a soccer ball, not a lacrosse ball, no sticks, and we just run, we just throw the ball around, and we tell them to slide, we tell them to recover, we tell them to stay stationary. We put and set these parameters up. So now what we're starting to do is teaching a little more game speed on the approach, on the recovery, and then we just flop it. Black goes on offense, white goes on defense. So everybody's getting kind of the, the understanding of that. On top of that, what that also allows you to do is have these guys run offense and dodge. So now they start to think about, they start to understand what offenses do. So they're one step ahead of the game, understanding what we might do. And this is how we jump into scouting reports where we will start uh, in the beginning of practice is you know, we will run, if we're playing you know, Rutgers and they run a 1-4-1, we'll do these drills out of a 1-4-1, but have the white team in the beginning run that 1-4-1 and then defend that. So they're working on uh, basically just you know, playing that offense so they're getting two sides of the ball. And then unsettle the man down. All our principles are the same for unsettle the man down. So even when we're in man down or we're doing unsettled, everything's exactly the same so our system kind of builds off itself. Slide recovery, team defense, um, this is the most important part. You know, I, I can spend hours talking about this. Uh, and this is, you know, like I said before, everybody slides. Sliding is pretty basic. You know, it's, it's you slide, you move the ball on. Where it gets crazy is the recovery. How do you get back to six on six? So a couple things we just talked about, sliding how, stick in body position from where, um, crease or new crease. And what I mean by that is one of the things you have to make a decision on is every offense is a motion offense. Every offense starts with the crease, and every offense then brings a new crease in. And so one of the first things you've got to make a decision on how you're going to slide is, are you going to slide early from that first crease, or are you going to slide late from that new crease coming in? And that's just something that you have to sit down and talk about. It can change from game to game, but that's just something to think about. When we slide, our, our basic philosophy is slide to where he's going to be, slide to the outside shoulder. Uh, once you pick him up, then you're, that's your man, and then you just kind of readjust your feet and keep him down the side. When sliding, we talk about the sliding lines. I'll show you that in a second. Um, what area, slide where he's going to be, not where he is. That's why we say slide to the outside and communicate the slide. We say bingo when we're sliding. What that allows uh, us to do is the guy who's on ball, who's really focused playing good on ball defense, he hears bingo. That means that a slide's coming. Once he sees the stick on the man, then he goes and recovers. We do not, we do not recover right off the bingo. We wait until that defender picks up that new man on the slide and then we recover. So one of the things that we always have a problem with in the very beginning is when do we slide? And where do we slide to? And how do we do it? And how is everybody going to know? We call it protect the house. So what we do is we just put a house out here. It's great for football. Um, this is basically where the hash marks out. It's about five. It comes all the way up top here. And we say if someone has their hands free or a step and is about to get into the house, we slide. This lets everybody know, all six guys know, that we're sliding, when we're going to slide. And if they're in the house, rolling back or getting in the middle, we're always sliding. And it's visible to everybody. We cone this up. We put this on the field. Protect the crease. Talked about that before. No crease goals. We're always going to the diagonal roll. We're always going to 
to fill the crease so we should never have any crease goals. And what that allows us to do is when we recover, we have a next slide ready. So we've now become a multiple sliding defense because of the way we fill. So if they move the ball into two passes and dodge again and we have to slide again, we're already set up because we protected the crease and we have a slide ready. And so when you put all these lines together, okay, so we talk about on ball, off ball during the slide. You got the off ball lines, um, which I'll show you in one second. You got to fill the hole in the bucket. And all we do is we talk about is when we slide, there's a hole in the bucket, there's water leaking out. We need to fill that. So we talk, we call it the anchor, um, our diagonal rule. The guy who's diagonal from the ball with those weak side, strong side lines, upfield, downfield lines, that guy fills the hole in the bucket. And then you just have to understand that there's something always going behind you. So if we miss a guy in the periphery, we have a, uh, a term we call look away. We tell the guys to look away because something's going on behind you. A lot of times we can see it before uh, they can see it. And so when you bring it all together, your total defense, you have your on ball lines, you have your off ball lines, you have your slide recovering. And essentially what you hear is you got your weak side, strong side, you got your upfield, downfield, which gives you your diagonal, which gives you the fill, which is the crease, and then you know when you're sliding because you have the house. Any questions on that? Seem, it seems pretty, uh, pretty intense, but when you get on the field, it helps these guys understand it for themselves. And that's the key is, you know, we're not on the field. We're just saying stuff like, look away. We need to have these guys to have points on the field, landmarks on the field, so they know exactly where they need to be, the diagonal, the, you know, the fill in the bucket, whatever, whatever it is. This allows them, and they can close their eyes, and they can see this. And this allows us to, to be better from a defensive standpoint, jumping into now, you know, our team defense. The recovery. This is where we get a little more intricate. And essentially, we talk about recovery, and this is also how, how we prepare for opponents, but you know, we have a system where um, essentially we want to snapshot the offense and look at the backside, what's going on the weak side, what's going on the backside. And when we snapshot that offense, what we, mean, what we mean is we take their offensive set, we slide, we take a picture of that and try to figure out exactly what they're trying to accomplish and what they're trying to do. So it stops their motion, no offensive, offensive stay um, stationary, everybody moves. So when we talk about snapshotting, we want to take a look and see what exactly they're trying to accomplish once they make us slide. Communicate the recovery, talk about it before it happens. So we know ahead of time, are we going to recover away to the crease or adjacent? We will talk about that before the slide ever comes. Hey, I'm the one, hey, I'm the fill. You know, don't forget you're the anchor, you know, and then tell him to go recover adjacent crease or away. So we're sort of dictating, we're only saying five or six things <coughs> in team defense. Snapshotting the O, the first thing you talk about is what offensive set, set are they in right here? You can see the red X's are in a 2-2-2, two, two, two. but what's the ending set? Most offenses run triangles, so a lot of times this guy will come up here, this guy will come off, they'll run attack triangle, so it ends up in a 2-1-3. So when you're looking at it, it's two different things. A 2 2 2 is completely different than a 2 1 3, um, kind of with the motion, with the crease changes. You know, again, you have to decide are you going to slide off this guy from the crease early, or if they bring a triangle, a new guy in, are you going to slide late on the crease? Um, and then what happens with the motions after the slide? And that's kind of where you take the snapshot to see exactly where they end up. And then what we're saying is on the weak side, there's always a 3, a three on 2. So when you snap, you snapshot the offense and you know, this is kind of the next level to this. And if you sit down and you think about it, it doesn't matter what offensive set they're in. Okay, this stands true all the time. If this guy has the ball here, okay, there's always an outlet forward. Every offensive of coach here will tell you, you always got to have an outlet forward and most likely an outlet backwards. But there's always a guy here. And then you always have to have a crease guy. Now, sometimes the crease guy might be coming in slow or from different angles but there's always a crease guy in some capacity at some point. And there's always a man with the ball. So if you cut this down and you take a good hard look at it, if you see if this is strong side, the ball's right here, there's always a three on two on the weak side. So when you take a look at defense and you break it down to the bare bones, how are you gonna cover that three on two on the back side? Now, they, these guys may be in different spots. He may be over here, he may be up here, he may be at the back pipe but there's always a three on two. So when we talk about defensive recovery, this is where we can get intricate. Sometimes, and we call it the anchor, sometimes we'll high anchor, meaning we'll cover the crease here. Sometimes we'll low anchor, we'll cover the crease here. Sometimes we'll recover away, meaning if this defender slides here, he recovers back here. Sometimes we'll cover the crease. Sometimes we'll cover adjacent. This is 
a, cre a simple crease sliding defense gets intricate because it's all about the recovery because once you slide, you're a man down, how do you get back to six on six? So that's the hard part. That's what defense is. How do you teach it? When we start teaching these things, we start in the very beginning teaching the, the team drills. We go to the D versus D, five on the dice. So we set up in a five on a die, two guys at X, one guy on a crease, two guys up top. And that's really how we start teaching. We teach the house lines, the weak side, uh, strong side, weak side, upfield, downfield. We teach the diagonal. We teach everything out of there. And we, use, we don't use the crossballs or sticks. We use like a soccer ball. When I was at Rutgers, we had this cool SpongeBob ball. And what it, it does is it, it teaches them how to do things at a faster pace than if you were taking like a small part of the drill. So you're teaching on the move because that ball moves fast, getting them to approach, you know, all the while you're talking about approaching the ball, cutting them in half, keeping your stick out, don't forget about your V-holds, okay? But it's teaching them now the team concept why those things are going on. So it allows a coach to be able to do all those at once and just take your time and, and, and see that. We do this. A lot of times we take that in practice. The offense is doing shooting. We will do this for 10, 15 minutes while the offense is shooting. We take this in our preparation. Um, you know, we'll go six on six if we're going to prepare for a team, Army, Navy, whatever, whatever their offenses set are. And we start with that. 1v1s plus one, 2v2s plus one, 3v3s plus one. What we're doing here is doing a one-on-one -on -one by having a slide guy and starting to work on the slide, starting to work on the recovery, <coughs> and start to work on the fill. I'll show you that in a second. And then once we jump into the next part, the backside recovery drill, which I think is our best drill that we do, um, five on the die lie, live, and then 6v6 teaching out of a 2 2 2 So now once you have the D versus D, the next step is to make it live. So five offensive guys stationary on, on a die, make it even more game speed. And then once we start, before we get into a, a crazy offense, we just teach out of a 2 2 2 So that's how we start with, with the basic team concepts. 2v2 plus 1, okay, it's live for the offense, so what that means is it's a little bit more game speed for the defense. Here we're working on slide and recovery, we're working on off-ball responsibilities, we're looking on communication. So in this drill, what we'll do is this guy will start with a ball, okay, this guy's on ball, this guy's off ball, this guy's ready to slide, he throws it over here, he now comes off ball, okay, he's changing his slide position, he's approaching the ball, so what we're working on is our basic concepts out of a kind of a, a part piecemeal kind of building up to it. And we talk about the communication and it just depends on you know, how you slide. If you slide adjacent, responsibilities will be different. Um, like I said, we slide from the crease. What you allows us you to do though, is really start bringing, and this is the most important part with defense is, and, and I, I'm sure everybody feels the same way, you know, defense is great. You got D middies, they get it. You got D poles, you get it. You spend a lot of time with them. But nine times out of 10, it's o middies on playing defense. And that's where you get scored on is when the o midi breaks down, they have a lot on your plate. So what these allow you to do is just by shifting where you start the drill, we can start bringing o middies into game speed a little bit slower and start talking about the responsibility. So in this case, we'll start the ball behind. We'll put a cone on this guy and simulate it. He's the plus one. And we'll start telling this guy, as he goes this way, you're the fill. So what we're trying to do is start to get these guys to understand strong side, weak side, okay? If you're the weak side, if this guy goes this way and you're the weak side defender and we're sliding from the crease, you have diagonal responsibility. You have to be the anchor. You have to fill the hole in the bucket, which is that upfield, downfield, weak side, strong side line, which is right there. So now what we're starting to do is work these little drills in to fine tune our, you know, just how we're positioning our, our feet and but just getting them offensive guys to start thinking about our fills and our responsibilities when we slide backside 3v2 drill uh, this is this is the best drill that we do uh, because I think this breaks down what defense is and what recovery is we're gonna slide we slide 60% of the time 60% of the time we're gonna be a man down on six on six we have to really practice this and this is how this drill lays out this guy has the ball nobody's on him there's a coach right here Here's your weak side 3v2, okay? And what we'll tell the guys is, and we'll just kind of tell them, um, you know, what to do, stay stationary, exchange, or pop. And it basically simulates three different looks you might get out of an offense. And then we can start this with just D guys on D guys. Then we can build it up to offense versus defense. Uh, and then we can also put a D guy on here and put the slide in and put the recovery in 
all these things building up into how we're going to recover it. So the next step here would be add the recovery, meaning put another defender, put another defender right here. So on the whistle, he recovers. You can also put the slide in and recover. So the end point is we're working on how we get back to six on six. So when we blow the whistle, this guy has the ball. Okay, he's live. He can either dodge and shoot. Um, if there's somebody on him in the very beginning, he's dodging, either throwing backwards or throwing forward. He's looking to attack this backside, uh, the weak side, 3v2, while we're recovering. Okay, we might tell them, you know, go ahead and, and do an exchange. So this guy dodges on the dodge. These two guys will exchange. So now what we're doing is we're introducing motion and how to cover that weak side 3v2, what it looks like, what it feels like, where they're going. Then we add the recovery guy into it to recover three on three. Then we add the slide. Okay, so now we're starting timing, all building up to your basic defense. Last one is just the pop. Okay, and again, it's just what teams will do and what possibilities they can do on the backside. Okay, again, we'll start with this with the three two, the, the, the three on two. Then we'll add the recovery to get the three on three, and then we'll add the slide and recovery, working on timing, and then we jump into the six on six. All the whole point is getting them to communicate why they're doing their, their on ball, off ball defense, why their toes are pointing to the sideline, why they're doing everything to get back to six on six where we want to get back to. Any questions on, on that? Uh, just a couple other thoughts, just to, just to finish with. Um, you know, there, there are times where we junk it up, and what, what I mean by junk it up on defense is. Maybe we uh, will shut off the shorties. Uh, in some games, you know, we'll shut off all three attack and just keep the ball up top. Sometimes um, we'll shut off X. You know, be creative. You know, be able to think about ways to disrupt offenses. Or, you know, if it's a set play offense, it's based on timing. Any way you can disrupt them is going to help you out from a defensive standpoint. <coughs> be careful with your drills with bad habits. Uh, years ago when I was at Rutgers, we had this drill called the gladiator drill. And basically, the gladiator drill was, and it was a footwork drill. We had guys standing on the end line facing this way, and we had one D guy standing right here with his palms up. The drill was the guy in the first line would come up, he would slap his hands, and it would be a live one-on-one. -on -one. And so our thought process was, okay, this is great. We don't want to be square, but we're going to help them work. If we are square, work on your drop step and your next step. That's what the drill was. What we found was happening is, their first initial reaction was to step in and push. And so what was happening is we were actually teaching a bad defensive concept by the drill that we were trying to work on the footwork concept. And now what was happening is those defenders, when they were getting on the field, they were stepping in behind the cage, not around goal line extending. They were getting beat up upfield uh, much faster. So I think when you're doing these drills and you know we sit around and you know I wake up in the middle of the night and draw stuff out, I'm always trying to be fancy. <laughs> You just got to be careful. You got to think things through. You know, the other question you have to ask is, does it really work? When I was at Rutgers, we were playing in Syracuse, and um, we had a, we toyed with for a year or two, forcing guys to their offhand. And I will tell you, it sounds great in theory, but the problem is when you force them to their offhand, and you put a lot of emphasis on that. And sometimes with some good players, it takes a lot to get them to their offhand. They were rolling back to their strong hand hands-free, able to see, able to shoot, but able to pick us apart. And so it actually was good in theory, but it was killing us. And, and it didn't work because these guys you know, who were dodgers and shooters were then, who they weren't great feeders, but because we were so far out of position because it took so much to force them outside, when they rolled back, they were able to, to see and hit us on skips. And you know, they, were, they were good players. So you know, when you start doing these creati creative things, you know, you got to really think about it. Does it actually work? You know, sometimes, you know, again, we talk about playing decisive. It's just, it's easier to be simple because you want the guys to be decisive. You want them to, to play fast. You know, that's where we talk about, you know, simple but complex. Our, our, our system is simple, Lafayette, but it's complex in how you fill. High anchor, low anchor, how you recover away to the crease adjacent. It's also, it's also, um, complex on how we slide. We have something called green, yellow, and red. Green means go early, so we're green to any rollbacks or middle dodge. Um, yellow means half slide, meaning come, take five steps and come back, and red means don't slide. And so what we do is when we start talking about preparing for teams 
is, you know, we may be red if, you know, someone dodges to their offhand, but we, we may be green when they dodge to their strong hand. So, you know, you can have an intricate defense that slides one way, but it's just different on how you prepare and how you approach that individual dodger, which again kind of comes into um, preparation, scouting, film, all those types of things. Uh, that's basically it. I, I don't know if, if any, anybody has any questions, um, anything that you uh, need to elaborate on. Um, yep. uh, the balls below the goal line extent, yep. what is your basic philosophy to covering the man with the ball with the long hole? How close do you get? You see, it's closer to the, to the goal, obviously, you don't put pressure on him. You let him sort of roam back there. We, what we'll do is we cut it in third. We'll basically cut it in thirds. And we'll say, like, the back third is just cushion. The middle third is stick on the hands. And then the, the top third, which is right around the crease, we start making physical contact. We always want to force him through X to make him a feeder. And then once he gets to X, jump over the cage and beat him to the spot, trying to keep him behind the cage as much as possible. My philosophy, you know, we talk about sliding is my honest philosophy is not to slide very much. You're more susceptible to giving up goals if you slide. So we spend a lot of time on that individual one-on-one -on -one defense behind the cage so we don't have to slide. Inevitably, you're always going to have to slide to short sticks. That's just the way it is. We recruit, we recruit that one-on-one -on -one matchup. We're trying not to slide defenders. But the reality is you're going to have to slide sometimes. Sometimes you have to be prepared for that. Um, but you know, for the most part, we're trying to drive those guys out. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you.